All right, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can create a rigid body chain, but we're gonna do it a little bit differently than what the normal way of doing it is. All right, this right here is an example of the normal way. Now, I'm gonna click play and see how it breaks. Rigid body chains are notorious when it comes to being unstable. And the reason why is because the rigid body system does not work very well with meshes it works good with like convex holes and uh, cubes basic shapes but not necessarily with actual geometry alright now this right here is the way we're gonna do it but I'm gonna show you both examples I'm gonna show you this example first and then I'm gonna modify it into this example look how much more stable this is now Believe it or not, this right here bakes about five times faster or simulates about five times quicker than this one. And this is the more stable one. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And I wanna, I am using Blender uh, 3.0, but it's, it will work pretty much the same way in any version. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is hide the camera. If you have the cube, go ahead and delete it because you will not need it. All right, we need to create a chain link. And in this case, we're gonna start with a torus because it more closely resembles a chain link. Now let's press seven to go into top side view. And I am an orthographic view and you can switch in and out of orthographic view by pressing five. All right. Now let's zoom in a little bit and I'm going to put this in wireframe so we can actually see, see the geometry. We need to edit the geometry so it's fewer parts. I'm going to set this to 10 or fewer faces, not parts. All right, Because the fewer faces we have, the um, quicker this will simulate, the less uh, resources it will need. All right, And we'll set this one to 8. And at this point, we need to make the link longer. So I'm going to uh, press uh, tab to go into edit mode. And then I'm going to press A once or twice until nothing is selected. And then I'm going to press box select, B, the letter B for box select, and then select this entire right half. And then I'm just going to press G for grab. X for the X axis and then drag it out to about right here. Then I'm going to press tab to exit edit mode. Now the origin point is right here and we want the origin point to be right in the middle. So what we're going to do is come up here to object, set origin, and then origin to geometry. All right. Now we need to make this link a little bit smaller because, I mean, look, the link is almost four meters long. I mean, that's like 12 feet. So let's just make this a little bit smaller. Press S for scale and then point one, enter. All right. Now what we need to do at this point is up, apply the scale because these show point one and we're dealing with physics objects. So we need to apply the scale. Press control A to bring up this menu and then click on scale to apply the scale. These show one, so we're good to go. Because if you don't do that, the rigid body system will sometimes act a little weird. All right. Now we need to give this some rigid body properties. So with this selected, come over here to the physics tab, go to rigid body, and then change this from convex hole to mesh. Because if it's on convex hole, it's calculating the physics based on the basic silhouette of the object. When it's on mesh, it's calculating it based on the actual geometry. And being that these links go in through each other, we have to actually calculate the physics based on its actual geometry. Now one more thing, we need to come down here to sensitivity and we need to set the margin to zero. And the reason why we're doing that is because that's kind of a, like a buffer it comes out whatever this number is set to it starts calculating physics that far away from the edge and we're just going to set it to zero 
otherwise it'd be hard to get this to work even way harder to get it to work correctly and it would look weird too once if you zoomed in on it once it was actually working all right so but we need to go ahead and duplicate this object and we're going to press alt d and then x and then just drag this to about right there it doesn't have to be perfect but not touching these two points can't be touching make them a little bit of a distance apart but not but not too far apart and not too close all right now let's rotate this on the x-axis rotate x 90 enter r for rotate x for the x-axis and then then 90 for 90 degrees all right now we need to select both of these it's basically select this one and then shift select that one all right I'm going to go into front side view by pressing 1 and I'm going to duplicate this and move it on the x-axis so that this point right here is right about right here so that they're, they're close but not touching kind of like before alt D to duplicate X for the x-axis and then just move it over to about right there doesn't have to be perfect but as long as this part right here is not inside of this link all right because we did that in one movement basically we duplicated it and then moved it all in one motion we can take and press shift R and it just duplicates what we just did now I'm going to zoom out and I'm just going to press shift R until the chains about this long I'm just pressing shift R over and over and over all right now we we need to make one little change to this we want this link to not fall with gravity that way it can stay still and the rest of them can just hang from it so with this one selected change it from active to passive which basically means gravity has no effect on it all right <clears throat> at this point we can actually press play and it should simulate press play and it starts to fall but see how unstable it is it just kind of falls apart now conventional wisdom when it comes to rigid bodies you would think that all you would need to do is increase the number of sub steps so let's bump this up to 50 and it should be more stable but it still breaks apart and that's because rigid bodies when they are set to mesh are notoriously um, unstable especially when you make them smaller like this if I would have kept these you know three meters or four meters long it would have been more stable but it also would be unrealistically large you know so at this point how do we make it stable I'm going to go ahead and set this back to 10 because 50 is too high and the easiest way to make this stable is essentially with this one selected press C for circle select and then left click and select all of these all right then come up here to object and this is where the magic happens go down the rigid body and shoot well let me go try this one more time object rigid body come down here to connect all right this created a bunch of constraints now we need to modify these constraints change it from fixed to hinge and then chain change select it to active to change chain by distance and chain by distance essentially just spreads them out basically let me see if I can explain what's going on this one right here is chained by distance it's connecting this one to this one and it's right in the middle of the two origin points all right now these are all hinges hinges they only allow it to rotate on the z-axis so essentially let me press 7 to go on the top side of you because the z-axis is going straight down from this perspective perspective it will only allow the chain to flex this direction but we need it to flex all the directions so what we need to do we need to kind of fake it 
so the best way to go about it is to um, basically select every other constraint I want to select this one I want to start with the second one because we know we want this chain or this link to swing down like this so we have the z-axis pointing that direction so that it will actually do that so I'm going to select this one and then basically shift select every other constraint and this is what I was talking about earlier if you make it too long it's going to be um, more time consuming to do this now there's there's probably a real good way to um, select every other one that I'm just not aware of but yeah you'll have to deal with my inadequacies when it comes to this all right now with uh, every other one selected all we have to do is press R for rotate X for the x-axis and then 90 now what that's essentially going to allow is for this link to rotate this way and this link to rotate this way so it, it will fake the um, the physics of the chain very well in my opinion all right now if we was to I'm just going to select this first one just so we can actually see it better at this point if we was to click play look how much more stable that is because the physics alone are no longer holding the chain together but and, and instead of the physics alone holding it together the constraints are actually holding the get holding it together in terms of like a joint you know what I mean and but it still has rigid body properties because if I was to take another mesh add mesh and let's just add a cylinder now I'm going to resize this s for scale and then 0.25 and then s for scale and Z and make this bigger and then rotate X 90 and if I was to put this down here so that the chain can fall on it before it would break for sure now let's go ahead and give us some rigid body print uh, properties rigid body passive and we can keep it set to convex hole go ahead and set this apply the scale so that these all show one control a apply the scale and now if we press play see it definitely has rigid body properties now if we watch real close see how the uh, chain is a little bit spongy it's almost like it's stretching just a little bit if we want to fix that all we have to do is come up here to the rigid body world settings and change the solver iterations let's set this to like 25 and we'll try it one more time alright see there's no stretching now because this right here is like sub steps but for the uh, constraints but anyway that right there is the absolute best way I have found to make um, chains work properly if you have any questions because I know I didn't explain everything in the best detail and I'm not a very good speaker so but if you have any questions let me know and I will try my best to answer your questions I guess that's it later people